Why? Because your mic's all the way back there? That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, talk about this matchup, man. I mean, think of the fans, as soon as this was announced, I think fans got really excited. Is this one that you're excited for? Uh, fans are excited anytime I fight. So it doesn't really matter who I'm fighting. It just all depends if the other guy's going to fight. Does it seem like a guy that'll fight? Because it seems like to us he will. Yeah, no, Derek always comes to fight. He's the Black Fedor, you know? <laughs> Black Beast, Black Fedor, you know? It's all the same. Obviously a big fight weekend over here in Vegas. How do you feel about being on the fight night card? Do you like your place, man? Uh, yeah, no. I, the only reason why I got bumped from main event to co-main is because of the title fight, but we all really know who's going to set the fireworks off. Obviously you mentioned uh, Derek Lewis is the Black Fader. Tell us a little bit about your training going into this one. Did you do anything different? Anything stand out in your mind about the preparation for this fight? I just trained with Maldonado, and then I just figured out how to beat him. Where's your son today? He's ac he he's actually uh, waiting to see the doctor. Oh no, is he alright? Yeah, well, I, oh, apparently you don't watch, you don't go on Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> Twitter. No, I don't you're not one of those like you're not one of those like news journalists that actually reads into and get no. facts. No, no, never. So you're like Ariel. No, I'm just joking. You were talking about uh, Fabio Maldonado. I have to get your thoughts. What did you think of that fatal performance against Maldonado? A lot of people are writing him off. Not many people want to see him in the UFC. Are you still one of the people that want to see Fedor come over to the company? Yeah, no. If, uh, I think Fedor could be uh, whoever gets him the first time. Um, instead of being red panty night, it'll be black panty night, you know? Yeah. And seeing as obviously you got a big fight this fight weekend, is that possibly a fight that you'd go for with a win over Derek Lewis? Obviously, you're a big name in the heavyweight division. Is that a fight you'd be interested in? Uh, yeah, no. Fedor would be, uh, has always been on the wish list for, uh, I think, any heavyweight that's really wanting to challenge themselves. Uh, then if Brock stays around, you know, that's a fight that, you know, that's another black panty night, you know? Boy, bring down what you see in Derek. I mean, obviously there's a lot of raw power there. Do you see technique as well, or do you feel like he's, you know, lacks refinement? No, I think it's, um, like, the, the thing about uh, Derek is he comes out to try to knock you out. He's, that's the reason why fans, you know, like the way he fights is um, I think that's what separates a lot of the guys now is if you're – the old, like an old school fighter, you definitely stick out of the crowd. Uh, it's like the zebra, you know, with the rest of the horses. You know, you definitely, uh, and that's why he stands out. It's because he's not trying to, he's always trying to finish the fight. And that's the one thing you got to respect as a fighter is anybody that tries to respect, uh, finishes the fight, that's, as a fight fan, that's who I'm trying to watch fight. Do you feel like that mindset so like is starting to fade? I'm sorry, what? Do you feel like that mindset is starting to fade a little bit? Because you say these old school fighters, you stick out. Uh, it, yeah, it's definitely f fading, but uh, the ones that actually still fight that way, they always stick out. Yeah. And, the, and that's the reason why if you see a decline in MMA, it's because of they're not old school fighters. Well, so if you see a guy like that, I mean, it would seem like he has a weakness to be his ground game a little bit. You obviously are skilled there, but I know how much you like to brawl as well. So how do you break it down? Is it a thing where you want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe and kind of just put on a show and prove manhood, or do you feel like there's strategy to it? I, no, I think... Uh, I mean, my last fight showed that there was a lot of strategy. Uh, it was the first time I actually stuck to a, or actually did a game plan, which was surprised enough that I actually stuck to it because I really wanted to knock his head off a lot more. Uh, but he wouldn't stay in the pocket and wouldn't stay in there to trade. So, um, but, you know, it's a three-round fight. Uh, I'm all about trying to get that fight as fast as possible just because I'm a heavyweight, we're lazy. We like to get that done and over with. Roy, a big story this weekend is uh, Brock Lesnar's return to the UFC. Have you thought about crossing the aisle the other way and trying to get uh, Vince McMahon's contact and reach out and be a crossover star? Uh, I would love to go uh, WWE. I, I think, uh, I, but it, I think in our contracts we're not allowed to do that. There's some people that get that little extra leeway, but but now I think everybody's kind of going that way. I, I might as well just try it. I mean, I'll talk to Dan and say, hey, can we do this? How do you see uh, Mark Hunt versus Brock Lesnar going? Uh, I think it's a stylistic matchup. Uh, it all really depends on how long Brock's known about this. If he's known this for about six months to a year, two years, how long he's been out? Anybody? Four. four? Years. So maybe he's been playing this for four years. He's like, I want Brock. I want. Um, I want uh, Mark Hunt. I'm gonna work on it. You know, whatever. Uh, but it's it's uh, stylistically. I think if Mark uh, puts his hands on him, I think it's, the fight's gonna be over. But if Brock gets that, you know big powered, you know, takedown and then 
you got a 265 pound, probably a 275 pound man that cuts. Uh, it's it's a button and a half to try to get up. You fought pretty much everyone at heavyweight at this point. With a guy like Derek Lewis, he's one of the younger heavyweights. Uh, do you see this as a thing you want to do in the future, just fighting uh, up and comers, or you know, do you have plans for you know the remaining fights you have uh, in the UFC for yourself? Uh, my my plan is to fight for the belt. Like that, there's no ifs and or buts, but. I'm all about Black Panty Night, so whatever that whatever that is, I I'm all about that one. Who do you think wins that title fight between Alistair and Stipe? Oh, you got two different because you, you got Alistair. Alistair's not his old old self. He's a, he's an athlete now, so um, and Stipe's an athlete. They're they're not that they're not that old school fighter where they're trying to you know really try to knock you out. They're trying to play that little you know. And then all of a sudden you might see something you know happen. So you gotta watch just because it's heavyweights because you know there's that one punch. Uh, but I probably give it to Steve A because I think Steve A is just a better athlete. See, so yeah, guy, you would rather rematch over Alistair. No, I'd rather I re rematch over Alistair over Steve A because uh, just because uh, name recognition. That's more Black Panther United than Steve A. If things go well for you this week, how far away realistically do you think you are from that title? Um, it's the UFC. I could be like good for like three fights ago. Two fights ago, I could be good for this for the next fight. If they uh, say, you know, tomorrow they pull out. Um, I could be fighting John Jones, and I just might be, I, I might be a little overweight for the fight, but I could fight for John, you know, against John Jones. You know, you never know. Thank you, guys. Last question. Last question. Anyone? Anyone? It's your chance. It's your chance. No. Roy, could you just uh, any memories you had? Uh, after the fight with Kimbo Slice, did you guys have a good bond in the house afterwards? Yeah, no, the, I, I think the where uh, I think Ultimate Fighter how the Ultimate Fighter season of ours, where they really could have changed the, you know the whole season up, where everybody would be like, dude, I gotta watch Ultimate Fighter. Was uh, Kimbo was actually my roommate. We stayed in the same room together, and that's where we actually became really good friends, and that's where we actually had a, a friendship after that. Well, mate, we've got to go. Sorry, they told me we've got to wrap it up. Sorry, fellas, we got to go. Sorry, guys, man. you guys are all assholes. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Thanks for Thank you, Roy. Thank you, Phyllis. Sorry about that.